Sure. All right, you can just talk normally. I'll speak a little bit louder. <coughs> okay. Ed, uh, Ed, Ed, tell me your name and, and briefly just give me, a, give me your story quickly. Yeah, hi, my name is Ed. Hi, my name is Ed. I'm from Atlanta. Uh, born and raised here. Um, I have glaucoma and cataracts, and that led to me being homeless. I, my, I lost my job because I was unable to see properly, and it took a while for my disability benefits to start, and during that time, you know, you go through your savings, your 401k and all that, and then there's just nothing left. <laughs> So you become homeless, and then that's how I came to the Central Presbyterian um, Winter Shelter. Tell me about the first time you met Don. Um, I met him the first day I was th that the shelter opened. He and Katie Basher, the uh, former director of the shelter, um, were. This was the first year that they had the uh, choir, uh, and he was seeking people to come in and join. And one of his big. Uh, perks, I guess, for membership was that, hey, you get to, to enter the shelter before anybody else does. So but that, that sold me right there. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was your first day with the choir like? Tell me, did you meet a lot of guys? Or? Uh, the first year, it was not that many of us, but, um, um, but at the same time, we, because there weren't that many, we became a, a I think, a, a more cohesive unit that year because um, there weren't that many, and you, we had to project and sing and sound as if so there were many more of us than there were. How has it, how has it changed? Uh, it varies from year to year. I've been a member uh, every year since the, uh, the, the choir's inception, and it varies with the people. That's a big determining factor of, uh, of how the choir is going to be. Uh, Donald is the um, anchor, if you will, because he. Uh, he sets the parameters, and because he has you know, certain standards that he wants to uh, to meet and maintain, and he kind of brings us up to it every year, surprisingly, <laughs> and it's been a wonderful experience. What have you gotten out of it, personally? Um, How's it helped you? There are just you, know, you, you, you. It's almost hard to put into words because uh, you meet people that you wouldn't ordinarily even talk to, even people in the shelter, you, you wouldn't normally talk to these people. Because you, you, you just go in, do your thing, go uh, eat, go to sleep, get up and go. But here you, you actually meet and get to know them on a personal basis, that, that, that people that you wouldn't or, ordinarily uh, know and who wouldn't ordinarily know you. Where has it, where has it taken you? Um, it's... Just been a fun, a fun time for me. I, I've always enjoyed singing and you know, performing since I was a little kid. But you know, and did choir and stuff like that. Um, and this is just a, a continuation of that, and I enjoy it very much. Think of that. What's one thing that you, when you look back at being in the choir, that you just it's just something that you'll tell people about for years to come? you just remember and it made you feel fabulous? Um, I can, that's very easy for me. Um, the first year we were um, performing, it, it was the second season, so it was going towards Easter. And um, I had a, an, an opening solo for a song, a song that I'd already performed uh, for people uh, prior to this song. Uh, um, I was singing here in, in the church. Uh, I was in this very spot. And um, Donald plays the opening refrain and all of a sudden, my mind just went completely blank. <laughs> I could not recall one single word. And he looks up, he looks at me, he looks back down, he plays the refrain again. And it, uh, then it came back and it was, the, he, but he did that without missing a beat. And, that, and his poise and uh, confidence in me carried me through that. For someone who's never heard of the Homer Choir before, how would you explain to them what it's meant to you? Um, hmm. Good question. Um, I would say friendship and love. Friendship and love? Mm -hmm. What about friendship and love now? Uh, that's what it means to me because uh, you come in here, um, we, uh, as a rule, we don't really care what your circumstances are in life, you know, whether you have anything uh, going on or currently not have anything going on. 
uh, achievement-wise or goal-wise. The, but uh, surprisingly, most of the guys that come in here and join the choir, before they leave, they are goal-oriented. You know, whether it's to get their disabilities uh, uh, things uh, straightened out and, and done, or, or started even, or it's to uh, get a job or return to school. Um, most, of the, most of the guys, by the time they, they leave the, um, the, the season, the, the, the uh, uh, performance, they are focused and have a drive to do something else. And as the name says, homework, they are trying to, at that point, get their steps uh, oriented towards finding a home for themselves and coming out of homelessness. Have you, can you think of anyone, you know, without naming names or specifics, but uh, someone that being involved in the choir has really, really brought them up? I can think of a couple. Um, and they have, uh, like as I said, when the season started, they were unemployed, uh, maybe looking for work, maybe not, but just going through the, the motions of um, being homeless, you know, which is a full-time job in itself. Uh, getting food and a place to stay and clothing and all, the, all that that entails and trying to stay sanitary. Um, but by the time the season ended, they had jobs. Uh, and, and apartments. So. What would your life be like right now if it were not for the homeless choir? It would probably be about the same as it is right now, but because that's because I get disability and whatnot. But it, um, uh, at the time when I started, to, when I joined the choir, my disability uh, hadn't started. So you know, I, I was waiting, and, and that's a, that's an awful long time to wait because you're in limbo, and the government is in no hurry to say, "Hey, here you go," or you know, or tell you what else to do next. Um, so for, for me, I, I'm kind of fortunate in, in, in that aspect. But I, I I can think of several people that, if not for the home home required, they would still be in that cycle of homelessness. Beautiful. Thank you.